Everybody, good morning. We start another week now with a Fox News alert because the terror at this shopping mall continues now for a third straight day. There's a standoff with Al-Qaeda link terrorists at an upscale shopping mall. This is in Nairobi, Kenya. At least 68 are dead, 175 injured, still an unknown number inside, trapped and cannot get out. That number's fluctuated between 50 and upwards of 100 as well. Uh, good morning. I'm Bill Hemmer, and welcome here to America's Newsroom as we follow this breaking story today. Morning, I'm Martha, Martha McCallum. We are now just starting to get an idea of the terrifying first moments of this attack when terrorists told all the Muslims to get out and they started shooting the non-Muslims. Here is some new cell phone video that shows us how this played out in the early moments. Take a look. <laughs> Through the aisles they go, just seeking refuge inside, wondering where the shots come from, whether it's inside that store or you know, down the hall. In all the stories like this that we've covered, these school shootings, and just the other day, the Washington Navy Yard, we've never seen video from inside as it's going on, and you get the sense of how frightening it is for these people. No you question. don't know where to go. Are you going to go around the aisle? Are you going to go out? You don't know where the shooters are. It is absolutely chilling. So this is a live look now outside, clearly, in Nairobi. Multiple explosions reported earlier today. Today. And that black smoke seen rising from the mall after security forces launched another offensive. They say they've killed at least two of the terrorists, but we don't know how many terrorists there are. GRN reporter James Rhino live on the phone now out of Nairobi with the latest from this hour. James, what do you have? Um, well, as you say, what we're seeing here in Nairobi are tense and distressing scenes, large plumes of black and gray smoke coming out of the Westgate shopping center. Um, now, we've had the uh, Kenyan officials uh, giving a press conference, and they've said that the, the smoke is actually the result of a fire that was started by the terrorists, the kind of distraction from the ongoing operation that retake control of the building, get the gun who are responsible for this shocking siege and also rescue some of the uh, remaining hostages. We don't know how many there are um, that are inside. Um, over the past few hours, we've heard explosions. We've got helicopters flying overhead um, and uh, gun battle going on in the background. Of course, journalists aren't able to get so close to the building, so we know exactly what's going on inside. But, uh, but, but, the, but the Kenyan officials say that, uh, that there is an ongoing operation, um, that they've sustained injuries, they've killed two of the terrorists, they've released most of the hostages, they've got control over most of the building. But, of course, this is an ongoing situation, and it has not been brought to an end yet. Yeah. Uh, James, number of questions here. How big is this shopping center? It's, uh, it's pretty big. It's big by Nairobi standards, that's for sure. It's uh, four stories, large car park. It's got loads of stuff inside. It's got a cinema. Okay. Um, it's got about 80 stores. It's got restaurants you don't get in other parts of Nairobi. You can go there. You can have frozen yogurt. Uh, you can uh, eat nice Japanese food. at fairly upmarket store. And uh, Al Shab has uh, um, released some information today in an interview in which they said the reason they, uh, they chose this particular store is because it was frequented by... Um, some of the, you know, political higher-ups in Kenya. It was frequented by um, foreigners and um, also because it contained uh, shops that were owned by Israeli and uh, American companies. Okay, so it's a substantial place. And given that size, do Kenyan officials believe they know where the terrorists are, on which floor or in which store, or not? Uh, yeah, we've got different reports on that. As I say, we can't say exactly what's going on inside this building. We can hear the stuff that's happening from outside, and the rest of the information is either coming from uh, Al-Shabaab itself, which says that it's, uh, that it's holed up and it's fighting back, um, or it's coming from the Kenya security forces, who say they have uh, control over every floor of the building um, and that, um, uh, uh, that there are areas where the terrorists are able to move around. 
Um, but exactly what is going on inside, we can't yeah. say. And what about the reports that if you were a Muslim, you were allowed to leave the mall? If you were not a Muslim, you were shot and killed. What do you have on that, James? Yeah, there's lots of information coming about that. I mean, we, we've heard stories from some of the people that are inside the mall to begin with and were able to escape. I mean, don't forget, this, this, this happened on Saturday afternoon. The mall was packed and uh, thousands of people, well, maybe more than a thousand people were able to get away. Others um, hid. Some have been taken hostage. And the number of civilians inside the mall is very small. Um, but, uh, yeah, we understand that, uh, that, the, that, the, that the gunmen were um, de demanding that people reveal information about whether or not they are Muslim. And if they said they were Muslim, they would maybe have to pass a test. For example, they might be asked a question like, what is the name of the prophet's mother? And if you didn't know the answer, then you could be killed execution style. I've even heard people um, who were hiding the parts of the mall actually tweeting and texting each other messages. And in that message, it would have a phrase in Arabic, um, a, a, a prayer or a line from the Quran. And if you were able to memorize that, the thing was that if you were... Um, you know, questions at gunpoint whether or not you are Muslim, you'd be able to receive this phrase in Arabic, which you may not even be able to understand or understand the language of, and that might be a way to get out of being killed. Wow. We've been told that there are anywhere between 10 to 15 terrorists. I, I don't know if you confirm that number or not. But, but as you give us an answer on that, is there any sense on behalf of the authorities that this is about to be brought to a conclusion, or could it go on for a fourth day? Um, it's, yeah, they have released the information that there are between 10 and 15. Um, they have also said that two of them have been killed as well. So, yeah, that would leave the number being around a dozen. We don't have a final answer on that. Um, whether or not it could be brought to a close, last night the Kenyan security forces said um, this will end tonight. So that's on Sunday night. It said it was going to end. It hasn't ended tonight. Uh, when everybody woke up in Nairobi this morning, it was still going on, and it's still going on now. 52 hours since they took the building. Um, when, they, uh, when the officials spoke earlier, they said that it's taking longer than anticipated and that it's proving quite a, a difficult uh, mall to regain uh, total control of. Uh, could it go into a fourth day? Your guess is as good as mine. James Reinald, terrific reporting there in Nairobi, Kenya. Thank you, sir. We'll be in touch with you, okay, as we get more headlines, 4 o'clock local time in Nairobi, Kenya now. Thank you, James. Martha.